We're going to be learning about arithmetic series and also a bit of sigma notation. I like this one right here. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dave Chappelle. He is so brilliant. But I like this. I mean, I'm sad. <laughs> Them. They turn into something positive. I was like, all right. Absolute value. I'm sad. <laughs> Let's take it from the Chappelle. I mean, this is a meme from Chappelle's show. Modern problems require modern solutions. All right. So a little bit sad, but uh, here we go. So uh, remember, a sequence. A sequence is just a list of numbers. And now we're going to be working, and remember what it means to be arithmetic. Arithmetic means, maybe I'll remind you here, arithmetic, remember, that has a common difference. That means it's a list of numbers where the difference is the same. So let me just do, that's at least what arithmetic is, just to remind you. But let's do it more generic here, because it's going to help us later when we do uh, geometric. So a series is just any list of numbers. No, sorry, a sequence is any list of numbers. A series, however, a series is just, it's the sum uh, of the numbers. Now you have to decide how far to go, but it's the sum of the numbers in a sequence. This is a generic thing. So if you have some sort of sequence, some sort of list of numbers, then this right here is just the sum of all of them. So you just add them. Remember, that's what sum means. Sum means add them, okay? So sum means add. You add all the numbers. So if you had a list of like, you know, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and so on, and I said, what's the sum of the first 22 uh, terms? You'd have to go 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 11, and keep going. That's how you would do it. Now, I want to introduce something. It's called sigma notation. Uh, it looks a little bit weird at first. We use the Greek symbol sigma. So if you're Greek, this is just a letter for you. It's sigma. But really, this just means add up all the terms, uh, or add up the terms. So you have to know, like, this is just a symbol that we use. If you've never seen it before, some people get really tripped up by this, okay? But it's called sigma notation. So sigma just means this symbol right here, just means add up all the terms. Now you have to know a recipe to follow, you have to know where to start and where to finish. So here's just an example. Now keep in mind, this is not arithmetic, this is just a generic sigma, just to get you used to this notation. So let's just say we see this. What this really means here is this one right here means start here. I mean, start with this letter I. We have this thing called an I. Uh, we just invent it. So it's a letter, we call it I, and we say, hey, do I squared. But don't just do I squared. It basically says start here at I equals 1 and keep going, add up all the terms until you finish here. So in other words, stop here. And I say here, this is your recipe to follow. So this is actually what you should do. So follow this recipe. So for this particular example, whoops, I thought I'd make it better. I made it worse. For this particular example, then let's actually solve this one right here. So let's see. We want to follow this recipe of taking i and squaring it. And I'm supposed to start off with i equals 1. Well, if I make i equals 1, it becomes just 1 squared. Do you get it? It's just 1 squared. However, then I have to add. That's where the sigma comes in. I add to it. Now I have to increase this index by one. So I always just go up by one integer. So if I start off at i equals one, like I'm not adding a decimal amount. So I'm doing one. The next one I could do is going to be two squared. And then I go, I keep going and increasing that index. See, that's the recipe to follow. Then I go three squared. Now I go four squared and five squared. But where do I stop? Well, I told you where to stop. I stop at three. So watch carefully. I have to go back and erase those because I stop right here. This is actually where I stop, because this is my last one. Then I just got to figure this out. Well, 1 squared is 1 times 1. It's just 1. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And 3 squared, oops, my square doesn't look very good. 3 squared is not 6. It's 3 times 3, which is 9. Well, 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. So the answer in this case right here is 14. That is the sum just showing you this in case you ever see sigma notation somewhere this is how you deal with it there's a recipe to follow just follow the recipe and just start here finish here and change your letter here could it be k it could be n we do lots of different things in mathematics with it okay so let's learn about an arithmetic series well if something is arithmetic there's a common difference and if it's a series we add up all the numbers right or at least the first whatever so an arithmetic series then must be just the sum of n terms in that arithmetic sequence. 
And we even have an equation for it. So this is also in your formula booklet, okay? So it goes like this. So we actually write like this. So we say equals, well, actually, we don't have an equals. I'll just leave it like this. So this one right here, we use S for the sum. I hope that makes sense. We use S for the sum, and we have the first N terms. So they actually didn't decide to use uh, sigma notation for this. This goes S, N. Now the way this one here goes, we do N over 2. Now I like to write an open bracket like this, like a square one, although it doesn't quite look like that on your formula book. They just have a circle, like a rounded one. But it's 2U1 plus N minus 1 times D. That's the equation you should use. There's another version though. I mean, there's there's a there's an alternate version because this right here is useful because it works with as long as you know the first term and the common difference, you can find any term. But there's another version as well. Uh, that one uses uh, so it still goes n over two, except it uses the first term and the nth term. So if you happen to know what that last term is, if you want like the sum of the first 5,000 terms and you know what the term number 5,000 is, then you can use that one. Basically use whatever you need. So this right here is on your formula booklet. You don't have to memorize it, but it's uh, useful. So let's actually do an example. By the way, do you see this? What's 5Q plus 5Q? What's 10Q? It sounds like you're saying, thank you. <laughs> My daughter, by the way, uh, she's only eight years old. Uh, we live in Denmark, right? So I speak to her in English, but she doesn't really want to speak English at all. But it's one of the few things she'll say in English. She said this to her English teacher, actually, because uh, she speaks mostly Danish. But in uh, her English class, she actually told her teacher this because it's so cute. 5Q plus 5Q. Thank you. Like, thank you. You're welcome. All right. What's the sum of the first 20 terms in this one? So here we go. I don't feel like doing this on my calculator and sort of going like 100 plus 98 plus 96 plus 94. I'd have to keep going and do that 20 times. I could, it's just really long. So instead, let's use this formula. So okay, so it helps on an exam or on a test, you should always write down the generic equation, so SN. Just basically show the person, show your teacher, whoever's marking this, that you know what you're doing. So write this down, it really helps. Then it's nice to show the substitution you're gonna make. Ah, well, what's the first term? I have to know U1, the first term. First term is 100. So that's good, so I've got that one. And what's D? Do you notice what D is? D would be 98 minus 100, the common difference, right? So that would be minus two. So it's 96 minus 98, the same, this is the same. In other words, 100, I always gotta subtract two. That's my rule. Well, I take those, I substitute them in, and away I go. And I don't want the nth term, I want the 20th term. So you show your substitution, you show that you know what you're doing. So 20 over 2. Now let's see, that's going to be 2 times u1, which is 100. It's a good idea to always show your work in case you make a mistake somewhere. Then your teacher, whoever's marking this right here, can see what you're doing. Um, all right, let's keep going then. So if I do this right here, that equals, let's see, 20 divided by 2 is just 10. Um, I'll make this a rounded bracket. Now 2 times 100 is just 200. 20 minus 1 is 19, but I have that times minus 2. Oops, I guess I need that bracket after all. Keep going then, so it's 10 times, let's see, this is 200. And uh, what's 19 times 2? That's 38, but I have to do minus 38. All right, so that means, let's see, what's 200 minus 38? That's 162, yeah. And then 10 times that, it's just 1620. So there we go. I've got my answer. My 20th, my sum of the first 20 terms is 1620. So that should work. If I did it on my calculator and actually added them up, I'd say this was actually pretty fast. So this formula is actually quite useful.